What is a Mototi octopus? He is a close cousin of the blue ring octopus and shares some of the same deadly cocktail of toxins. Unlike its cousin, the Mototi has only two iridescent blue rings, one on either side of its body. So what is it that makes him so deadly? Well, to begin, one of the most common things we've seen here in Darwin are of course the sea snake and their venom is so strong that they can kill up to 20 adult humans. The close cousin of Mototi, the blue ring octopus, he is much more venomous than the sea snake. His toxin can kill up to 26 humans and the Mototi, which you're about to see in this video, he can kill up to 22 humans. Some of the symptoms are excessive salvia production, difficulty swallowing, chest tightness, tingling, numbness, sweating, lightheadedness, dizziness, headache, nausea, loss of vision, paralysis, weakness in your muscles, lack of coordination, lack of oxygen in your tissue resulting in this, etc. And the worst thing about it, there's no antivenom. So if he bites you, you're in big, big trouble. But on the positive side, there's not been yet the recorded bite or death of the Mototi, but there are a few ones of the blue ringed octopus, his cousin, but they do carry the same venom. But the good thing about it is that these guys, they are not aggressive. The only reason they would ever attack you is if you provoke them. So in this video, we're gonna show you a safe method to approach this type of octopus and perhaps get him out of the den safe and sound. Good morning everybody, welcome to a new video. We are on a new boat with sea explorers called the Gypsy. This is the oldest one in the fleet and they rotate the boats every four months or so. So we are yeah, exploring a new boat. But we're gonna go to Turtle Island again in CE Barangay on a different dive location. Remember the last one? Yeah, we had uh, Nudie City and... Oh, yeah. Critter Cove. Critter Cove. We named them ourselves. And we're gonna go to the same area and see it there, down near Chateau, right? Yeah, I'm gonna show you guys a map here of the island from above. And you see there, we're gonna drop down at the edge of the reef and then make ourselves way into the small bay. And we're expecting a lot of muck, a lot of dirty, very little visibility. But hopefully, we're gonna send some really strange critters. So right there in the background is Turtle Island and the difference between the dives today we're going to be dropping at the edge or the end of that rock there. I don't know if you can see it right now but there's a, a big boulder, should be a reef around there and then we'll make ourselves way into the bay where it probably goes from Koros to a very bad monkey visibility and that's usually where you find super rare and weird creatures. And as you can see, there's a massive difference between the action cameras of GoPro and the big ones like I normally shoot with. However, I always recommend people to start out with a GoPro just to get a hang of it, getting used to filming underwater with something in the hand while controlling the buoyancy. As we get into the dive, we start to filming some beautiful critters and of course, a bunch of nudibranchs. These are quite common ones. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of nature. I love everything that's alive, growing and healthy and seeing that in front of our eyes. Underwater is always a treat. And I made a small mistake of this dive. I tried to get into the bay, swim along the reef because I want to get into the bay and that's where you should see all the muck and rare stuff. Despite that, we of course saw some beautiful things and apparently the guys saw a Coleman shrimp, but I didn't because I was rushing. So the first time I didn't get that much of a good footage unfortunately. I really wanted to uh, swim across that bay and into the cove but we didn't even reach half of the way so I was kind of swimming too much instead of filming or finding. But that's all good. We still found some really cool critters and nudies. But we are here docked. We just did our surface interval. The boys are 
detaching the line we're actually attached to this small fisherman boat here we're gonna go around the corner here there's a old pier you see it maybe here in the drone footage that pier has probably never been dove before so this is once again exploration dive so let's jump in there it's probably gonna be very low visibility muck dive and hopefully you can see some awesome critters One of my favorite dives is of course the exploration one and this is a dive site we believe no one has dove before that we're aware of so we have no clue what we're getting ourselves into and Immediately once we drop down the visibility is so bad that we cancel the dive when we go back to the surface. <laughs> wow, that was the worst visibility I've ever seen. It was like, like five centimeters visibility. <laughs> So we just came straight up, we're gonna head further south, try to find a better spot. Alright, we just swim from the pier to this buoy here on the other side. We're gonna try to uh, descend here again and hopefully we have some visibility. And I pretty much didn't find anything special in this dive and that's part of exploration guys. Sometimes we don't see anything and sometimes we hit the jackpot. Unfortunately this time, not too much. See anything good? The last dive? Yeah. Dude, I can't even see you. <laughs> Here we get into the third dive. The one that you guys have been waiting for where I found the octopus. But we'll get that into the second because that was literally the last thing I filmed during the day. But before that was a lot of beautiful critters, even some I've never seen before. The dive site is called Pasak and the first critter are these beautiful nudibranchs. Not just one, not just two, but three, four of them. Don't ask me what they're doing. Get a room, guys. And of course, my all-time favorite pipefish. This is the ornate ghost pipefish. It's a beautiful banded Tosuma shrimp, very beautiful shrimp, white colored and the blue patterns on them and the pointy nose. And of course, a couple of frog fishes, you know, frog fish season. And then as we're about to finish the dive, I have about 50 bars left. Everybody has ascended, made their safety stop and gone up to the surface except me. And I noticed these two eyes popping out of a hole of a big bamboo. So of course I decided to investigate, I take a small peek in sight and lo and behold I see something similar to octopus, could it actually be? I get into another angle and clearly I can see an eye and some tentacles, so yes I found an octopus. And not just a regular octopus, this one is one of the most rare and possibly the second most venomous octopus in the world. But of course as I'm filming it I had no clue. Because sometimes when you see these octopuses, you can't really identify them until you look over the footage because they can be so small. As you can see here, our friend has a mirror up to the octopus. And this is a method that can help get the octopuses out of their den without touching or harming or doing anything that you're not supposed to. So here's a trick. If you want to get an octopus out of a den, just bring a mirror and put it in front of him. And that way they will safely come out of their hole. And now looking at the footage, I can definitely confirm and see this is Motote Octopus. He is a close cousin of the blue ringed octopus. And there's only one way to identify them. If it's the Motote, he will have two blue rings just below his eyes. Exact same blue rings as the blue ringed octopus, however only carrying two of them on his body. And most of the time this blue ring is not even visible. But at this shot, you can clearly see the blue ring up here. Oops, he almost goes back into the hole, but we bring the mirror back. 
and at this point I still had no clue what type of octopus this was. At one point I thought it was the mimic because he was mimicking a lot of things. Here he is blending with the soft coral and then in the background a giant snail shell. <laughs> How awesome is that? Also got a very nice close-up shot of his eyes and then if you move down you can see the blue ring. And then he started to change into different colors and mimicking different species. Take a look at this. And one of the reasons I love octopuses is the fact that they're so intelligent creatures and at the same time they're able to do things only few animals on this planet are able to do. Here's one of his characteristics, trying to walk. Not quite sure he's trying to mimic, but how awesome is that? A octopus walking on two feet. And then he goes from walking to swimming. And then in the next shot, he changes it to a complete different animal, mimicking a squid. Not only does he morph himself into completely different colors of black and white, but his body, his shape, and the way he swim is just like a squid. How awesome is that? I've never seen anything like this before. This is the coolest shot probably I've ever got of octopus. Then after running around for a little bit, I just let him go back into his den. Thank you Mr. Motiti for showing us all of your cool characteristics and it was time for me to go up to the surface. I only had about 10 to 15 bars left of air, but the shots were worth it. Octopus, which is one of the rarest. It's also one of the most venomous things in the ocean, just like blue rings. Yes! <laughs> I know we haven't crossed off the mimic or blue ring, but this is as rare as it gets. Maybe the mimic is the most because it hasn't been seen for a long time here in Darwin. Are you jealous that I got the uh, octopus? Yeah, I usually. So he was bad because I saw the Coleman shrimp yeah. and he did it. <laughs> so the next time he saw an octopus and I did it. Now we're even. 